If you have a Creality Ender 3 Pro printer and want to print flexible TPU filament, stay tuned. Today I'm going to go over the modifications that I've done to make this Ender 3 Pro printer print TPU successfully. There's several small modifications as well as some larger modifications. This video is going to cover the largest modification, which is putting a dual gear extruder on the printer. You see the red one we have here. I purchased this from Amazon. I've purchased several from Amazon and some of them work and some of them really don't work. I'm going to take you through the steps on how to modify that to print TPU even better, along with replacing the Bowden tube and some other fittings. Other videos in this series are going to cover how to set up the E-step, which will tell the pulses of the, the servo motor the correct amount of filament to feed. We're going to talk about how to properly level the bed, how to install a glass bed on this printer, which isn't as easy as just putting a piece of glass on it. We're also going to talk about how to change the printer nozzle. We're going to also have another video that is the filament flow. When you put a new roll of filament in, you can't just assume that it's going to print correctly. Every piece of filament is not created equally. Sometimes there are larger diameters and smaller diameters, and you have to compensate for that in your programming. The last video is going to cover how to program a part properly in TPU so it turns out like this the first time, and you can go to bed at night and wake up in the morning and have yourself a nice finished part. Before you take your Ender 3 printer apart, you need to print five different parts out of PLA to get your printer ready to print TPU. In the description box below, there's going to be an STL file for each individual part, as well as the G code to print it on your Ender 3 printer. The first one's going to be a filament guide support. That's going to slip into the channel here on the side. The second one is the lower guide support that goes onto the extruder mount here to guide the filament from the reel through and into the extruder. The other three parts here, this is going to be a cable clip that replaces the stock Ender 3 cable clip. The dual gear extruder that I'm going to recommend doesn't have a cable clip on it, so I've designed a clip for that to keep your installation nice and neat. This is going to be a strain relief to hold the Bowden tube in place as well as your wires and keep it nice and neat as the carriage is going back and forth. And the last item is going to be an improved cooling duct to help aid the drying of the TPU as it comes out of the nozzle liquid. The stock ender I found blows only from one direction. When, when printing TPU, the filament is flexible. When it's hot, it's really flexible. And this is going to actually make the filament come out of the nozzle straight because it's gonna have even pressure from both sides. So let's go ahead and let's get started on the extruder. When you unpack your new extruder, from Winson. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not, but that's how I'm going to say it. There's several parts. There's actually no instructions. And from reading the reviews on Amazon, a lot of people were having trouble putting it together. It's fairly simple. This part is the part that's caused most people the most confusion. This is actually a riv nut, which is a thread insert, which is kind of like a pop rivet. They don't use it that way. They actually use it as a spring seat that goes onto your tension spring. And that's what seems to cause the most problems. It also comes with a really stiff spring that I don't like to use. This is actually like a bed spring. And I really feel it puts too much pressure, especially for TPU. It actually will smash the filament flat. So what I'd like to do to this extruder is modify it even further. With TPU, when you're printing, the filament needs to have as little gap every place that it possibly can have. On this extruder, there's a small area that's probably about that big, maybe a 16th of an inch, that can still allow the filament to, as I call it, wad up in this area. What I do is I take a four millimeter drill bit and I put this in a vise. I drill all the way through, so now it's a complete through hole. This will allow your new Capricorn Bowden tube to actually go all the way through and you go, well, that might not work. Well, I thought the same thing until I tried it. Once the gears are installed, you can actually push this blue tube right up against the drive wheel and essentially have no play in the filament. And that's one of the reasons you can print TPU reliably on your Ender 3. 
So let's go ahead and start to put this together on the printer. When you assemble your dual gear extruder out of the box, you're going to have to put this screw in it here. And what that's going to be is a base for the tension spring. You're going to have to put this screw in here, which you don't want to over tighten, but you want to make sure it's snug enough. And when you're installing the roller bearings, you need to put some form of lubrication on it. We'll go ahead and we'll put the extruder back together here. There's one screw that has a chamfer on the edge, which obviously will go in the hole that has the chamfer on it. What I usually do is I leave the screws somewhat loose. That way it's easier to get it all aligned. You want to tighten these down nice and snug, but certainly you don't want to strip them off. We'll put the tension arm on. It's, that uses a different size Allen wrench. The last thing you want to do is you want to make sure that this gear here is level with the top gear so your filament grooves are even. This one I had already pre-installed at the right height. For me, it ends up being even with the end of the shaft. The last thing that you want to do is take your tension spring and put that rib nut in it. Put it in against the other screw. And then my little wire guide actually creates exactly the right spacing for the spring tension. So when you put this in the end here, all you need to do is just tighten it up snug and it'll put the right amount of tension on the extruder spring. So now we need to disassemble the stock fan housing so we can install our new cooling duct as well as our strain relief. These screws here are going to have to be replaced with a longer screw. These are available on Amazon and I'll put a link in the description below. They're just standard M2 metric cap screws. We want to take the four screws out that hold the fan in place. Take the stock fan shroud off. The new one that you've printed actually has a support so the fan will lay nice and flat. You may have to trim some of these edges with an X-Acto knife or utility knife to get it so the fan will actually snap right into this here. So you want a nice tight fit in this area here. This little tab that I've designed on the part, you need to make sure that it clips up over the edge of the sheet metal here. So when you put it together, you want to slide it in from the side here. Hold it in place and you can see on the inside here that it's, it's engaged. These screws you don't want to tighten down very tight at all because you can crack the plastic fan shroud itself.
Now, while we have this off, I want to replace the stock fitting with one of the pneumatic fittings. This one I had already pre-loosened up. The way I like to take this out is take a piece of old Bowden tube and now you can wind it out. You can do the same thing to put the new pneumatic fitting in. It makes it easier to thread it in. I leave this loose until I have my nozzle fully installed. Then we'll take our strain relief and we'll put that over the top. When you print the part, you notice it has reliefs in the back for the stock sheet metal part. It's a very good design. I found this on Thingiverse. Before we move on to the next step, you're going to need to cut a piece of Capricorn Bowden tube. The reason you want to use the Capricorn tube, it's a much tighter tolerance on the inside than the factory tube, and it has, yes, more lubricity, yes, that's a real word, to make the, the TPU slide through the tubing easier. I found the proper length, in my opinion, is 15 inches for this Bowden tube. The link that I'm going to put in the description below actually has the cutter in it and the two air type fittings or these are pneumatic fittings that you want to use they have a much tighter grip on the bowden tube because this tube is a lot slicker due to its high lubricity so we'll put it out here and we'll use the cutter to cut it off at 15 inches now before you tighten these two screws down i like to make sure that this fan is nice and level make sure your printer is on a level surface and then put a small level on the top here. And then you want to snug it up with, with it level. Now what this is going to do is help the airflow be exactly even across so you don't have one airstream higher or lower than the other. Now all you need to do is secure this with a couple of tie wraps. And you need to install your Bowden tube, which is pushed down into the pneumatic fitting. And then we need to put the fitting on the back side here on the extruder. And you just want to snug these up snug. You don't want to make them crazy tight and bend the housing itself. So just snug so they're not going to come loose. We'll push that one in. We'll secure the Bowden tube now with a tie wrap. You just want to pull that up snug. And the last thing you want to do after you cut your tie wraps off, I like to use a set of zero cutters, which are very similar to the cutters that the ender comes with for cutting the filament. Makes a nice clean cut on your tie wraps. And now we can put our wire in that little guide that I designed. So now as it travels back and forth, you can see it's nice and smooth. The tube has a good flow to it, which is going to aid in printing TPU. Once you've completed these steps on your Ender 3 printer, you'll need to set the E-step on your extruder. I'll link a video up here in the corner for you. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to leave me a comment and like and subscribe.